Welcome back. It's The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, we just look at the second conversation right here, and uh, uh, the conversation is around Eid El Fatri. Uh, now, Ramadan has been described as the most important and holiest month in the Islamic calendar, and clerics have urged the Muslim faithful to make charity a duty in order to gain multiple rewards from Allah. Uh, we'll be looking at the significance of you know, the entire celebration, what it means for the Muslim community right here. Uh, we have in the studio an Islamic cleric, Ashim Ibrahim Bolaji. It's good to have you join us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, so it's, let's get straight to it. I, I wasn't sure what I was going to say. Maybe happy Eid El Fatri. Yeah, okay. you can say, yeah, okay, happy, so happy Eid El Fatri. Yeah, thank you. you very much. So let's get to it. What is Eid El Fatri and what is the significance of you know this celebration? Yeah, okay. So um Bismillah salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah wa ala ahli wa sahabihi wa man wala. Um as Muslims, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always has this way of rewarding us after we have um, come through um some some, some some first sort of spiritual um upliftment or spiritual journey. So it gives us like a reward saying like a thank you for going through this process and then after we are done with that process um it gives us a day to celebrate a day to share within ourselves the lessons that we have learned over the month and then explain to others how it is for us muslims to share goodness between each other and then explain to people around us that are non-muslims also that this is actually the message of islam and this is the message of we muslims so Eid al fitri is a day of um, sober reflection of whatever has happened over the month of Ramadan and also a day of celebration, like a day of receiving gifts, of sharing gifts all over ourselves and then saying that, yes, we have come through this journey. Then we look at what we have been able to, be, been able to achieve over the course of the month. You know that, um, as we all know, when Ramadan comes, every Muslim comes with this new self that is different from the way they've been coming over the years. So. That month creates a time for you to connect truly with Allah. It creates a time for you to keep your five daily prayers, then fasting, then wake up at the midnight to pray, and all that, which we might not have done in normal days that are different from the month of Ramadan. So after that month, we now access ourselves. You know yourself if you have gone through some form of spiritual upliftment. You know yourself that you have changed. Maybe there are some um, particular acts that you do before Ramadan that you have dropped after Ramadan. So that is how you know that this my 13 months has actually been accepted. You know, you have some particular sins. That you, this is a particular sin that I do. And I'm going to end this month with this sin. By the time I exit this month, I do not want to go back to this sin. If you're able to do that, then you know that your Ramadan has been accepted. Let's talk about all of that now because uh, during the 30-day uh, fast uh, for the Muslims, uh, they uh, go through a whole lot. Uh, we talk about sober reflection and they do things in moderation. They try to you know, study and get closer to Allah and um, they put away most of the sins. Uh, so what happens after that? Uh, because most times uh, I've had to interact with most of them. They, they, they tend to be very, very close to Allah during the period of Ramadan. Shouldn't it be spread across the other you know seasons of the year other month of the year should it stop on just um, the ramadan fast yeah so um as as muslims once once again um there is a key point for us that we're supposed to look at all the time and we reiterate it to um, a lot of our, a lot of muslims that ramadan is not just a month on its own it's a reformation it's not just about the fasts it's not about staying away from eating and all that. It's a month for you to reform yourself. So whatever lessons you have learned in that month, you're supposed to take it through your whole life. You know, a lot of people got a way to recreate themselves during the month of Ramadan, and then they spread it afterwards. So whatever is haram, that is whatever is unlawful in Ramadan, remains unlawful. If you stay away from, say, you stay away from taking alcohol in Ramadan, it doesn't mean that after Ramadan you get back to taking alcohol. You're supposed to still stay away from taking alcohol because normally you know that taking alcohol is unlawful for you as a Muslim. So this is, it's just like that. But people tend to think that just that month, I want to be pure and clean. And then after every other month I can. Yes, we know that um, Allah gave us that month as a month of forgiveness. 
So whatever sins you've committed over the over the last eleven months, you have that month to come and clean up yourself. Because Allah says, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that if you fast that month completely, and after the end of that month, you are like the day you were born, sinless. So if you're sinless after a whole month, you know people feel that. But the the the, the problem is you're not assured of meeting that month again alive. So if you fast this year complete Ramadan this year and you're sinless afterwards and then you start sinning immediately again. What gives you the assurance that you're going to meet under Ramadan alive? Nobody gives you the assurance. So why don't you just maintain whatever you have been able to learn through the months and then take it over all over the other months of the year. Mm. So so like a reminder now, uh, this period very significant, what would be the message out there? Okay, so the message out there is that as Muslims, today is a day of sober reflection. Not just a day to marry. It's not just a day of merriment where we just eat excessively. That oh, we've been we've not been eating good for thirty days. Then we have to do. Let's just uh, eat as much as possible. Yeah, you can eat, celebrate, share gifts, visit people, visit the poor, visit the needy, visit people in the sick homes and all that. And after you have done all that, sit down and reflect. That what what have I been able to gain over the course of this month? What have I been able to do differently than that particular thing? You know, put pressure on it, apply pressure. So if it's, you say that it's your five daily prayers that you've been able to be complete over the next 30 days, then start doing that, okay, you know, every time. Start praying your five times prayer daily and then keep that closeness you have with Allah. So that's, that's the main point of Ramadan, that closeness you have with the Creator. People will tell you, oh, I prayed during Ramadan and the prayer got accepted. It's the same God. Okay. It means if you prayed in other days to you, you would have accepted it. Right. But you did not see yourself as someone that could you're pray. Not you're, yeah, you're, you're feeling like, oh, I'm not, I'm not clean enough. I'm not pure enough. I cannot talk to God. And God said, come. I would answer you. Just ask me. I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. So you don't even need to shout for me to listen to you. Just ask me. Speak to me the way you want to, any way you can speak to me. In fact, the prophet advised us that when we want to pray as Muslims, talk to God like you're talking to your friend. Okay, so fine. Uh, you know, Ramadan is one of the pillars of um, Islam. And yeah. though I know during, during Ramadan, too, there also talks of um, um, uh, zakat al fit and um, sadaqat. Uh, does this actually still play out even after Ramadan? Okay, so we have, we have two forms of zakat. We have the zakat al fitri, which is the one that is supposed to have been done this morning. So that is um, giving um, harms to people that are fasting Muslims that might necessarily not have something to do their own. Um, festivities in festivals so you know this morning people want to eat and all that and they may not have food so you give them the raw food and if you have money you can add money to it for them to go and cook and all that so you look for the downtrodden that actually need it that is zakat and fitri which is far different from zakat itself so zakat itself is another embodiment of islamic principle like we have the tithes so yeah so zakat is 2.5 percent of your annual earnings and that is for it's at a particular threshold as at today i think it's about 2.1 million so if you have that over the course of a year then you're liable to pay zakat on it that is different from the zakat of the so that call is just like giving it's like everyday general giving, giving general giving you can give at any time so muslims are enjoined to always give. and the part of the lessons of ramadan is for you to see how the pangs of hunger for people that do not have like you have so you know how to treat them when you meet them so people that that are suffering like you you know uh, averagely it's not like every nigerian is happy with this economic situation so if you have someone that you know that's just a, just so so invariably sodaka should be done like um like on a daily practice in fact it's like a an hourly if you can do it okay. highly like you a know, lifestyle like a lifestyle adopt it as a muslim and give as much as possible in fact giving purifies you yourself the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was told in the Quran where Allah says that Khuzmin Amwalihim Sadaqatan. Collect from them, you know, some form of sadaqa. Then after that, pray for them. That thing you're collecting from them is to purify them. So you too are collecting it. Don't keep it. As you're collecting it, share it out to people too. So that they can pray for the person that gave it to you. And from that, you're going to create people alive. All right. 
Oh, we must say a very big thank you to you for the enlightenment that you have given to us concerning uh, the Ramadan, uh, what people should do even afterwards. Uh, you also talked about uh, Zakat, uh, Zakat al-Fitr and um, Sadaqah. I actually needed to be reminded about it because I used to understand all of that. Thank you so much. Uh, we were joined by Hashim Ibrahim Bolaji, an Islamic um, cleric, and we have been looking at the essence of um, Eid al-Fitr and, of course, uh, the lessons um, from Ramadan just reflect on all of that. Many thanks once again for sharing your thoughts with us. We do Thank you very it. much for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that's the size of um, the show for today. We must say a very big thank you to all of you who have sat back to watch and of course to our Muslim brothers and sisters we say happy Eid al-Fit to you. Uh, my name is Justin Akadonye. We'll return again tomorrow. Alright, uh, that's the size of the conversation. It's alright to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Many thanks for watching. I am Messi Iboko. Have a great day.